Hi, my name is Kevin Taylor. Now, we all remember when the president, Nanaro Dankwe Kufuado, said his government will not be a place for making money and those who, are, who agree to serve the people must do so with the interest of the public at the forefront and not personal gain. This debate has always drawn in other Article 71 office holders, such as ministers and other beneficiaries. My fellow Ghanaians, the issue about Article 71 holders have always played center role in our politics and even economic speeches, and most Ghanaians always find it difficult to understand why Article 71 holders always get their way in stealing from the taxpayer, whether they are in office or out of office. Today, I will be unveiling, today, I will be unveiling what this president and this current government are doing behind the scenes to steal billions from us, even in the middle of a pandemic. Yes, in the middle of COVID-19 pandemic, this president, Nanaru Dankwe Kufuari, is only interested in making sure billions of dollars are paid to him and other Article 71 holders. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kevin Ekobedu Taylor. Welcome to With All Your Respect. Now, with all due respect, my fellow Ghanaians, today I'll be unveiling a very, very serious issue. I'll be talking to you about how this government, how some Article 71 holders, past and present, are coming together to steal from you and I. The president has said a lot about protecting the public purse. This was the reason why most Ghanaians voted for Nanado Danko Ekufuado and this NPP government. But today, we are going to delve deep and expose individuals who are planning or have planned to steal from us as Ghanaian. So let's start um, the expose today. Producers, are you guys ready? All right, let's do this. Now, um, producers, let's um, put, this, put, this, put this on the screen. Um, and this you are seeing on the screen is a letter from what we call the Forum for Former Members of Parliament. Um, if you know these guys, they are the FFMP. In fact, this group was put together during President Kufour's time. Yes, during President Kufour's time. And they call them Forum for Former Members of Parliament, FFP. In fact, this letter, they wrote this letter to um, the Chief of Staff. Um, in this letter, the caption, let me in fact talk about the date. The reference number is FFMP 03P 04R17420. If you have other documents to counter the documents I'll be showing you here today, you can do it. And I'm willing and ready to share that with Ghanaians. But what I'm going to show you today has never been seen by any individual in Ghana. I'm talking about civil society or citizens in Ghana. Now, um, they wrote this letter on the 17th of April, 2020. Yes, 17th of April, 2020, um, to the Chief of Staff, Jubilee House. Uh, and the caption was, Request for payment of arrears due members of the fourth parliament of the fourth republic. I'm talking about Kofor's time, you know, all the cabinet ministers, the MPs who were ministers, uh, they came together to form a group called the Forum for Former Members of Parliament, FFMP. Now, let me give you a brief history about these, this letter, and then we can move forward because it's very important for us to understand where this letter started and how it got here today on the desk of the Chief of Staff, yes, Freema Opari. Now, remember, in 2009, 2009, these same guys, when Atamils took over, may he so rest in peace, they wrote the same letter to then um, Chief of Staff. In fact, it was directed to L.B. Tosu. Uh, producer, can you put this letter there? Yes, it was actually directed to... L.B. Tosu, he was the chief director, chief of staff. And um, this letter was from the same FFMP. Um, These people, they were telling the government. And this letter was written on the 22nd of August, 2011. SCRA 144 slash um, 1. Now, they wrote this letter to the Atamil's office, to the chief of staff, telling them that, you know what? We are the former um, uh, Article 71 holders. 
Uh, we used to work with Kufour from 2004 to 2008. Yes, yes, from 2005 to 2008. 2005 to 2008. And the letter they said, we have attached the computation of salary arrears of ministers during the period 2005 to 2008, arising from implementation of the Chenri Hesse Committee Report. Now, a new name just popped up, Chenri Hesse Report. If we all remember, President Kufour put together the Chenri Hesse Committee to look into this matter, whether Article 71 holders during his time were supposed to get 20% increment in their salary. Something they didn't work for. Now, this is what happened. Chenry Harry report, Chenry Harry committee actually put together a report. And remember that after Chenry Hersey, that the CHC the CHC does, let's make it short. They put together their recommendation. The government then, I'm talking about the president and parliament, did not approve their recommendation. In fact, the president did not give a directive after they made a recommendation to the president and said, this is what we have found, and I think we think it is right for the government of Ghana to pay these Article 71 holders, ministers, cabinet ministers, and all that, this amount of money. So the president did not sanction it, and also the finance ministry did not do that, and parliament did not do that, and it is on record. So I just wanted to give you a background of what happened. So Chenry Hesse report was there. Then when Atamos came to office, they wrote to Atamos again, I'm talking about the FFMP, the former ministers uh, during Kufour's time from 2005, yes, to 2008. Now, interestingly, Atta Mills responded, but he responded after he had put together a committee to look into the committee's report because he felt, as the president of the republic, needed to go into that because there was a lot of money involved there. If you're going to pay these ministers or cabinet ministers who were already being paid, everything and today the, that president or that government leaves office and they come back to say that we are article 71 holders we used to be 71 holders we were supposed to get 20 percent increment and all these amounts are supposed to be paid to us president mills may so rest in peace in his own wisdom decided to put together a committee to also look into this matter now president atta mills committee was the iyc committee the ishmael yamsen committee if you all remember he put this committee together and they also brought him a report. Remember, when a committee is put together, it is up to the president to accept or decline the report. They make recommendations. They don't insist on whatever they have come up with the president should implement. So when a committee presents a, a document to a president, that is their recommendations. And that they are saying, Mr. President, this is what we found, and these are our facts. Look into it and think through it and apply it if you think it is right. Now, after President Mills looked into the IYC committee, which looked into the CHC, that's the Chenry Hesse Committee report, he came out with a lot of loopholes in the Chenry Hesse Committee report. Now, President Mills wrote a letter to Parliament, and in his letter he made it emphatic. And this letter was written on the 5th of November 2009. Producer, put this here. I'm saying the documents are there. Let's build the story. So that when people come out, we can use documents to talk to them. But there's more, so don't rush it. So this document was written to Parliament by President John Evans at Tamils in 2009, November 5th. This is what happened. Um, let me just, in fact, for, for checks and for verifications, um, the reference is OPS 1130092224. And the document is there. Go look for it and come and fight Kevin Taylor. So uh, he actually wrote the letter to the Right Honourable Speaker of Parliament. And the Right Honourable Speaker of Parliament then was Right Honourable Mrs. Justice Joyce Bamfu Ado. Documents are there. You can see it for yourself. Now, in the letter John Evans Tamils wrote to Parliament in 2009 after he took over, he emphatically said he was not going to pay that money because it was um, the, the, the reports of Chenry Hesse Committee during the first time it had a lack merit. It had so much loopholes and that they did not deserve that money because that money is so much. It's not even about the money being so much. It's because the way they were trying to frame to take that money from ordinary Ghanaians like you and I was crazy. Remember, those cabinet ministers, those M M ministers, some of them are in this current government now. They are part of the FFMP, the Forum for Former Members of Parliament. Now, 
I'm going to read a few things that Tamil pointed out um, why he didn't want he was not going to pay that money. Now, Atamel said the chief of staff has already forwarded to you a copy of the Ishmael Yamsin committee. He's talking about his committee. This letter he's writing to parliament. I have considered the IYC, that is the Ishmael Yamsin committee report, and have accepted the recommendations that the Chinrihesi committee, CHC report, 2008, should not be accepted for implementation for the following reasons. And the reasons are there, as you all can see. The reasons are there, right? The first reason President Mills gave was there seemed to be more than one final report of the CHC, of the Chinrihesi Committee. That is coming from the President of the Republic, then, John Evans at Mills. That is some of the reasons he decided not to pay this Article 71 holders during Kofor's time. Then cabinet ministers, the ministers, all those people. These are the reasons. The second point Professor John Evans at Mills gave was that the IYC cannot confirm which of the final receipt was allegedly approved. Remember, um, government, the president, uh, uh, John Evans, um, John Ejokum Kofo, and um, parliament did not approve this. Even the finance minister did not. Because the president has to append his signature, then parliament will have to yeah, yes it, and then the, the auditor general will have to start paying the money. Um, the, the, the auditor general has to also sign for the accountant general to do that. And the president saw that the president did not even do that. So that report was half made report. He went on to say that there are uncertainties, ambiguities, and doubts surrounding the CHC report leading to lack of authenticity. This is, this is the letter John Evans at Hamels wrote to parliament to tell them that those ministers, the cabinet ministers and the chief of staffs and the council of elders during Kofor's time, the Article 71 holders during Kofor's time, he is not going to pay them because the report from Chemehese committee lacks credibility. It did not actually, it wasn't, it, the inconsistencies in the report were too much. And the fourth one he said was, neither the president nor parliament gave approval as mandated under Article 71 and Article 712, respectively of the 1992 Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. As I already said, the president has to admit, has to pen it, the parliament to, they have to approve it before such money, and it did not happen under Kofor's administration, before Kofor left office. So he doesn't see the reason why these people have to be given that 20% increment and be paid millions. And I'm going to come to the money, but I want us to follow the story for you to understand where we started and why this letter has landed on the desk of the current chief of staff. Yes, Madame Frima Opari. Now, let's move forward. Now, after 2009, this group, Forum for Former Members of Parliament, these people, they disappeared. They went under the sheet. Nobody heard from them again. These are cabinet ministers. And you have to understand, these people are still in, in government now. They are in politics today. Majority of them are in this government. Even the president was in that cabinet. If the president was part of this, this group. And I'll mention the names. 29, 2009, the duck, 2010, they're quiet. That was NDC's era. 2011, quiet NDC in power. Atamos goes out, they're still under the carpet, quiet. 2013, they are around, quiet. 2014, they are around, they are quiet. 15, 16, quiet. 17, quiet. 18, 2018, they are still quiet. They are still around. 2019, they are quiet. They didn't show up. Now, the president comes into office. Remember, Ikufuari comes to office and tells Ghanaians that we don't have a kobo. All the money in our coffers has been squandered or were wasted by the past administration, John Muhammad's administration. We don't have any money. And that we have to be working so hard to create money. We need to go out and borrow. Remember, we have borrowed more than any government. I'm talking about this MPP government than any government in our history. So the president created that impression, and Kenneth Ferrata has been also trumpeting that impression that we don't have a cent as a country. So 2018, 2019, 2020, something happens. In 2020, something very funny happens. On April 22nd, um, 2020, that is this year, in the middle of the pandemic, a letter drops on the desk of the chief of staff. Yes, Madame Akusia Frima Opare, Chief of Staff, Honorable. A letter drops on her desk. And that letter is from Forum for Former Members of Parliament. 
F F M P. Suddenly, 2020, they pop up and they drop a letter and they tell the chief of staff that you know what, we have attached this letter we wrote to um, former Atamels President Atamels. He didn't he didn't accept. Now we have attached that same letter to this letter, telling you that we deserve that money as Article 71 holders in then Kufour's government, 2005 to 2008. And this is what they wrote to the chief. And you remember, the chief of staff is basically the senior secretary to the president. She can never make a move without the instructions of the president. The chief of staff actually works under the president and she takes actions from the president. So you have to remember this letter is coming from the office of the president. So when they say the chief of staff, chief of staff, basically they wrote this letter to the president who is part of the FFMP, the former um, um, uh, ministers or the cabinet the article 71 holders during Kufour's time and the president is part of this group now the president being part of that group tells the group to write to his office for action to be taken so on the 22nd of april 2020 were we under lockdown have we had we gone for the one billion dollars from the from the imf the hundred million dollars the 35 million dollars because we are told the world that we don't have a dime left right we're in a pandemic issues were happening you were struggling the government, this country, the government could not sustain this nation for three weeks. We were all moving around trying to sustain this nation. But these people, these Article 71 holders, during Kufour's time, they quickly dropped a letter on the desk of the Chief of Staff, Madame Freeman Opari. If you have other documents, I keep saying, drop it and say Kevin Taylor is lying. This is the letter. So now, something happens. What happens? They write a letter to the Chief, the, the President's, um, office telling the president and saying that you know what we want to be paid now the chief of staff receives the letter and the date he received the letter is the 17th of april put the letter back there we are back to list the letter 17th of april 2020 17th of april this year 2020 this ffmp guys write a letter to the chief of staff Nana Rodanko is Kufuado's chief of staff, Madame Fremo Pari, and tell her that, you know what, you need to pay us this money because we are the seven, seven, Article 71 holders. We used to work with Kufu. We are cabinet ministers, and we are ministers, and we need that money. Remember, the president of the Republic of Ghana is part of this group. Now, they write this letter, and in the letter, they say that, subsequently, I'm going to read a few things in the letter so that we can move ahead. Now, they say, in the second paragraph, let me take the first paragraph. You may recall that in your letter, blah, 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 22nd November 2017, you granted approval for the settlement of arrears of salary emolument, which had accrued to members of the third parliament of the Fourth Republic. Now, second paragraph, it says, subsequently in harmony with the clerk of parliament letter number blah, 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 18 July 2018, the Honorable Minister of Finance in a letter, blah, 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 granted approval for the payment of the said arrears of salary or emoluments which were duly paid after it had been clarified by the auditor general in his letter but so what they are trying to say now is that this letter which atamel said that he was not going to pay the letter they wrote to atamel this same letter they are now saying that the finance minister today has given the green light but remember the president then atamel said that money should not be paid now they, they have been emboldened and they come to say that, forget what Atamil said, who was the president, the orders he gave, and that the finance minister today said, we can come to you, you the chief of staff, to write to the auditor general to make sure the auditor general pays us. And this letter was written to the president's office. Yes, directed to the chief of staff, saying that we want, we want to be paid 17th of April this year, 2020. You know what happened? Funny enough, five days, 22nd of April, 2020, the chief of staff writes to the auditor general. Yes, this president tells the chief of staff, write to the auditor general, 17th to the 22nd, just five days, the president takes action. We were in the middle of a pandemic, Mr. President. You are part of this group. The money they are seeking, the money they are asking, the former president said, there were so many loopholes in that committee, President Kufour put together, and even President Kufour did not sanction that committee's um, um, uh, revelation. But today, 
after five days in the middle of pandemic, you telling Ghanaians that you are fighting the pandemic, there's no money, and that the past administration has finished all the money, you are going to World Bank, IMF, to borrow $1 billion, you are telling the Auditor General to pen or sanction this letter so that you and your friends who call yourself Article 71, ex-Article 71 holders, can benefit from these billions. And I'm going to tell Ghanaians how much money we are talking about here. Now, just five days, 22nd of April 2020, the Chief of Staff, under the instructions of the President, basically the President writes to the Auditor General and says that, please refer to the attached letter dated 17th, 2020, this letter, from the Forum for Former Members of Parliament with the supporting document. Your department is being kindly requested to carry out an auditory verification on the request made by the former legislators on the Fourth Parliament of Fourth Republic. It will be appreciated if your final report on this exercise is transmitted to the office within two weeks after the date of this letter. Remember, you see the reason why now the Auditor General, people want him in jail? I've been following this story for almost seven months now. I was watching events, how things were happening. I didn't want to talk about this because I realized I needed more information. But when they started harassing, following the Auditor General, heckling him around or Safi Marfo, who is also part of this forum, Tom Marfo is part of this cabinet, uh, ministers. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how much they are asking for. The heckling Auditor General, all the institutions that is checking this government, this government or this president has made it his passion to go after them. Recently, Auditor General was, was almost jailed. But I've been following this story for almost seven to eight months. And I was watching and watching. I'm like, is this real? Because when double salary issue come up, when double payment, the, you see, I'm talking about Chairman Sabuzu. He's part of this. And I'll tell you how much they all want to take. So they gave the Auditor General two weeks to make sure he comes back and tell them that, yes, I've done verification. These guys deserve this money. But the Auditor General writes a letter to the President's office. It's getting murkier. The Auditor General decides to write to the, uh, the, the President's office to tell the President what the, the, the laws are and the kind of laws he is working within and why he is the Auditor General and that he is not supposed to be pushed around to do things that is out of the Constitution. Now, on the 8th of May, the President writes a letter on the 22nd of April. On the 8th of May, 2020, the Auditor General replies the Chief of Staff. Basically, the Auditor General replies the President of the Republic of Ghana. And then this is what happens. The, the reference number is AG20-5. It's there. Producer, put it there. We are doing some serious stuff here. This is, this is serious because, you see, some people are out of government almost 15 to 20 years now. They want to take money. And these same people are in government, being led by the president who is part of this group. And we are being told that there's no money to even feed people on the street. There's no money. We have to go to IMF for $1 billion. But in the middle of a pandemic, the president finds time to write to the Auditor General to make sure that some things are done for him and his friends. Now, let's move on. So the Auditor General replies the president in a very weird manner. Now, I'm going to read the letter of the Auditor General. And remember, I'm going to publish all these documents on loudsilenceradio.com. There, you don't find any fake news. Loudsilenceradio.com. When you go there, the lazy journalist, go there and find the document and use that document to pose questions. Don't sit there and defend criminals and corrupt officials. It's about time you started using facts to back your argument. Go to loudsilenceradio.com. That is where you find these documents. No, you can't get these documents anywhere in the world. Only on loudsilenceradio.com. Loudsilenceradio.com. Now let's move on. The Auditor General writes to the President, and that's the letter there. He says, um, Dear Honorable Akusia Freema Osea Pari, because of time, I can't read everything. But when you access the document, you see it. But the first paragraph, he says, I wish to strongly advise that you ignore the request for additional payment being demanded by the FFMP because the argument that the request is based on recommendations of a lapses in the Chinrihese Committee report is invalid. These are the statements from the Auditor General's office. It goes on to say that the impression is being created that it is the committee and not the president who determines the emolument of the legislature. It says Article 71 of the Constitution provides that the salaries and allowances payable and the facilities and privileges available to the legislature, judiciary and Auditor General and others shall be determined by the President of the Republic. 
uh, on the recommendation of the committee. It shall be determined by the president on the recommendations of the committee. So the committee makes recommendations and the president determines the actions to take. That is why Atamels was quoting and said that Kufu set up a Chenrehese committee. He did not implement anything. The uh, parliament did not implement anything. Even the finance minister, they did not pen anything to make anything official. And when he came in and he set up the IYC, they brought their recommendation to him and his own wisdom. And from the recommendation from the committee, he realized that there were lots and lots of holes in it. Ambiguities, lies, double um, um, recommendation. So in the president's determination, in his powers, at Amel's powers, he said they should not be they should not be paid. This is from the President of the Republic of Ghana after IYC recommendation. So we have to understand that the Auditor General is working within the confines of the Constitution and is following what the President said in 2009 to Parliament. You see, the Auditor General is smart because he needs to work within uh, rules and regulations. And he says, if it was any Auditor General, he would say, okay, Mr. President, but he's quoting the President statement from the former president and the former president actually made a statement made it official by sending it to parliament now in the second paragraph he said i will now want to address the substantive issue of the chenrihese committee it's it's in the, the, the auditor general's report and i'll quote some part he said on 31st march 2009 i set up a five-member committee under the chairmanship of so the auditor general quoted the atamel's statement he sent to parliament and he quoted this to the chief of staff indirectly. He quoted this letter and saying that I'm going by what the president de decided or directed. So the Auditor General out of the Auditor General decided to tell the president that you know what, these people don't deserve this money because the then president put together a commission and his own wisdom determined and said that he gave a directive that they should not be paid. And the constitution makes it clear because the CHC did not wasn't even valid. The CHC, I'm talking about Chenry Hesse report, was not accepted because it had so many loopholes. And President Tata Mills gave reasons, about four solid reasons, why that Chenry Hesse report wasn't supposed to be considered. So the Auditor General says, I'm working within constitution, I'm working within the directives of the former president, John Evans Tata Mills. But you see, I keep telling Ghanaians that. These are politicians we have to be careful about. These old men, they are dangerous. These Article 71 holders, this is the first part. Now, I'm going to tell you how much they were demanding, how much money they wanted Ghanaians to pay them in the middle of a pandemic, how much money the President of the Republic of Ghana wanted us Ghanaians to pay them when they said we are going to IMF for one billion. When we had gone for one billion, we have set up a fund that is going to support Ghanaians, the COVID-19 fund, because the economy could not sustain the country for just three weeks. It shows how this president does not care. I keep telling you, Ghanaian, this man in office today is a liar. He does not care about you people. In the middle of a pandemic, he's pushing the Auditor General to pay money to ex-ministers. Article 71 holders, 15 years ago, he is interested in that. Not interested in the number of people who are going to die. That is my problem, and that is my job here. Now, let me show you people how much everybody is taking here. I said I'm going to publish this on Loud Silence Radio and TV, loudsilenceradio.com. Loudsilenceradio.com. All the documents will be there. Go there and check. Those who are saying Kevin Tiller is providing fake documents, come with better counter documents and say all that I have provided are lies. And you know, this is not just the end. I'm going to bring some other ones. I said we have seven months to elections. Every month, I'm going to give you one killer punch. And it will make you decide the future or decide your future how to vote or who to trust to vote for in 2020. Now, the list is about 139 people. Yes, the FFMP, the former Article 71 holders, about 139. And they, you know, the person who took the list took about le not less than 90 million, 900 million. Yes, yes, 90,000 Ghana. Old Ghana is 900 million. Now, we are talking about the average of 130,000 Ghana, 118,000 Ghana, 150,000 Ghana. They want to be paid. 1.5 billion old Ghana cities. Not one person. All of them, hundreds, hundreds, nineties, 900 million. Now, the, 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 the actors, the favorite actors are here. I'm going to publish this and you go through and you see all of them. And these ministers were all under Kufo's administration. 
and they are most of them are in this administration. Now the Adokufo Adokufo was taking is supposed to take 137,641 Ghana 21 pesos. That is 1.3 billion old Ghana cities. That is how much he's supposed to take. We are talking about 139 people. Who, this is just out of force money. Somebody like As uh, Gladys Asma. Gladys Asma will be taking 139,000, almost 140,000 Ghana cities today. That is about 1.4 billion old Ghana cities. We are talking about Battels, Kwamena Battels. Will also be taking 116,000, 1.6, 1 1.1 billion old Ghana cities. We are talking about Owusu Ajman, Hakman Owusu Ajman. His name is in here. He is a cabinet minister and also an MP. He's supposed to be taking 139,000 Ghana cities in two weeks. They're expecting this money. Now, the president says the Auditor General should look into a letter to his reply and these people will be paid. Now, yes, there are people here, Osafu Mafu. Almighty Osaf Mafu. Yeah, Osaf Mafu is here. And you know how much Osaf Mafu is taking? Here there is, he has made it a little low. He's taking almost 70,700 million old Ghana cities. That's how much he deserves. They need to pay him. And then Kandapa to Asia. Kandapa is supposed to take 99,000, almost 900 million old Ghana cities. That's how much he says he deserves as an Article 71 holder. The Almighty Nana Adodam Kwa Ekufuado. Yes, cabinet minister and MP. He is taking 152,000 Ghana cities. That is almost 1.5 billion old Ghana cities. Recently, he said he has dashed his three month salary. How much is that? 30,000 Ghana cities or something. He is turning around to go take 1.5 billion. This is the man you say is not corruptible. He writes a letter in 2020 demanding money from, for his friend. He is part of a group. In order in 2005, and you want to tell me Nana Danko Kufuado is not the most corrupt president in the history of this nation? He wants this government that he says is struggling. Dr. Baumia are the puppet going out there to, to joke himself, be taking one billion, and you say this president is not a corrupt man? Ekufuado is the most corrupt president in our history because if you care about the people, you care about this nation, in the middle of pandemic, you will not give the auditor you know, two weeks to pay these people. Look into the documents and make sure that this passes. You are taking 1.5 billion and you can't feed people for three weeks. Nanada Danko Ekufuado is an embarrassment. It's an embodiment of corruption because if a president writes a letter from his office to tell Ghanaians, tell the Auditor General to make sure these people are paid, which is part of Article 71 holders, then the president cannot be trusted. And I keep telling you, he has disappointed everybody and disappointed me as an MPP person because he has shown that he is corrupt to the bone. Ekufuado has overseen this and he's still waiting for documents to pay. My fellow Ghanaians, this is serious. And I have other things to show you. You'll be shocked to your bone. This is just the part one. And then people like uh, Shaliboche is here. Awuni Idrisu. Jogate. Jogate is taking how much? Jogate is taking 127,000. That is 1.2 billion old Ghana cities. They want all this money too. Oseche Mensa Bonsu, the senior, um, the, the, the majority leader. This man, I keep telling you, he's not in parliament for anything. Oseche Mensa Bonsu. He is taking 87,870 million old Ghana cities. 870 million old Ghana cities. I'll say Chi Bafu. Then John Ejikum Kufo, the ex president, will be taking 226,002.2 billion old Ghana cities. Ex president Kufo, Aladi Ali Mahama, may he so rest in peace, even when he's dead. No, no matter, it, I'm not shocked that two weeks or three weeks ago, his son came out to say that this president is the best president. Ali Muhammad will be taking 205,000 Ghana cities, almost 2 billion old Ghana cities. Um, and then a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So, you know what? I'm going to publish all this for Ghanaians to see. And if anybody has the counter documents saying Kevin Tiller is lying, they should bring it out. My fellow Ghanaians, I've told you that this is the time we have to go after these people. They are liars. Especially the president has disappointed me. Disappointed everybody. In the middle of a pandemic. You are saying that money's over 15 years. People didn't... You want that money to be paid now and turn around to tell us you don't have money to help ordinary Ghanaians. My fellow Ghanaians, this is just the beginning. I'm going to also, in the weeks to come, show you their salaries. How much they are taking, how much president is taking year by year, benefits and all that. We are going to enter institutions. I have lots of things to tell you, my fellow Ghanaians. The president of the day today says that 
Article 71 holders. Yes, we should make sure we pay them 15 to 20 years ago. He's part of that group, FFMP. I'm expecting them to come out because I have some documents I'm not going to release today. When they come out, I'll tell them something. Ladies and gentlemen, keep telling you people, we are all messengers. Messengers without a Quran or a Bible in our hand. Messengers who are ready and willing to speak truth to power. But fellow Ghanaians, let us focus. And when we focus, we will get to the last cent. I keep telling you, my name is Kevin Ekobedu Taylor, and all that you heard here is with all due respect. <laughs>